higher today. Stocks moving up as fears of an all-out trade war began to ease. With me right now, Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, Liz Harrington with the Washington Free Beacon, and former AFL CIO organizer Stuart Acuff. Stuart, I'm going to start with you. You know Hi, what's Trish. interesting? We don't always agree on stuff, right. but uh, this might be one where, you know, I've started to think long and hard about this this trade issue, and uh, I'm thinking we might actually be seeing uh, this in a, in a similar way. Tell me your thoughts on these tariffs. Well, I you know I want to quote uh, Chuck Schumer yesterday when he said neither party has paid enough attention to the crisis of deindustrialization in America, and so I think this is a very good move by the president. I wish the process had been a little more careful. Um, and a little more strategic and targeted, but we do need to protect our industries, our basic industries in America, uh, including steel and aluminum. Uh, it is vital for us to have that uh, industrial capacity and that manufacturing capacity, not just for national defense, that is certainly important, but also for average working people. Um, and, you know, we have now a social and cultural crisis. That's where we get into the problems of, of the uh, diseases of uh, despair, addiction, alcoholism. 50-year-old workers mm -hmm. yeah. uh, lost their jobs to trade. They have no other place to yeah. go. It, it, so it's a crisis throughout our society. Sure. And, and Liz, I mean, I, I always talk about, as Stuart was uh, going on there, about the hourglass economy. You probably can't see this. but. Imagine an hourglass, right? And then you got the, the middle class right here. They're the ones getting squeezed right, throughout all Trish. this. And as, right. our, uh, as our foreign exports, exports um, basically, or, or our trade imbalance increases, what we have seen is that incomes have been stagnant. I mean, this is something that's been going on it, for the it, last it, three decades, last four, four now, decades. Four yes. now, Trish. So I mean, can you I, say, start can to I wonder, make one other comment real okay. quick? And that is that, that average working people are tired of, of watching talking heads on, uh, on national TV talking as if there were a crisis when there's, no been, there's not been any of that kind of uh, uh, sincere concern after 40 years of stagnant wages. And so this has been a long time coming. This has been More a long time coming. And I would done. say, Liz Harrington, this is one of the reasons he was elected, right? This is one of the reasons why you saw a lot of people cross over. Some of those Democrats in, in, in traditionally Democratic places voted for him because they feel shortchanged by the administration that was in power. And this is an opportunity to do something different. Liz, is it going to have the dire consequences that some Republicans are predicting? Well, I'm usually skeptical uh, when it comes to these dire predictions, when it comes to any Trump administration policy, uh, because we know they haven't exactly panned out. And um, I think there will be some economic effects to this. But in the long run, we shouldn't be surprised because this is what Trump said he was going to do. And like you mentioned, all those voters in the Rust Belt, uh, they voted for him because he promised to do these things. This is a campaign promise met. I think it's a win for him politically because he said he was going to protect American workers. He said he wanted to address the, the big uh, $800 billion trade deficit. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what he's doing. And so I think that is a win for him politically. Uh, you also see it's worked uh, in the past as a political move. We saw George W. Bush instituted steel tariffs. Uh, it really benefited him in Ohio, and he mm -hmm. ended up winning a re-election in 2004. Uh, okay, so there's a political aspect to this yeah. as well. And, uh, it, you know, that, that uh, shouldn't be lost throughout. But the market is okay with it. For now, anyway, Melissa, um, what, what's your sense of where this is heading? Well, the market's green now as we're talking. We just went green in the day. We were down a little bit earlier today. We had that correction a couple weeks ago. Boom, we ran right up over it. If we make new highs again very quickly after this announcement today, I would not be shocked at all. And what I mean, I mean the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks. And that means, essentially, if we close above the highs again in the next month, that 
this had no negative effect on the economy, no negative effect on the market. I think people were really up in arms about it and excited in the last week when he announced it. I think it was Friday or Thursday or Friday last week he announced it. But I think it was more of a political maneuver, like some of the people were talking about, than anything else. Mm -hmm. And Pennsylvania, I'm from Pennsylvania, that was one of the states that typically voted Democrat mm -hmm. and went Republican. And I think he's looking out. He's looking out ahead. He's looking, he's probably going to run again. But the market loves Trump. It's, we rallied every day since he was elected. Yeah, and yet everybody's so doomsday about every policy he comes up <laughs> with. Um, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Well, look, we've got tax relief, right, in the form yeah. of tax reform. That should uh, hopefully start to spur things along. We've seen very good numbers on the jobs front uh, and a little bit of wage inflation. So you start combining all those things together. And I don't know, Stuart, it may make a Republican out of you. It's not going to make a Republican out of me, but I, I like to come on Fox and tell the truth. And the truth is that the president, though there's no love lost uh, from me for him, uh, is right this time. And uh, it's a good move. It's good. See, I, I come from a little, I live in a, I retired to a little town in West Virginia called Martinsburg. It used to be an industrial town. Now it's hollowed out. Yeah. And it is, has the worst opioid crisis in America. A lot of that has to do with the destruction of good jobs. Sure. I'm, I'm, no, it's, I'm, it's devastating. Look, you know, they called the Great Depression the Great Depression for a reason. And I can remember my grandmother telling me when her father lost his job at the factory, he was never the same. He really right. did no. go into a state of depression it, because it is demoralizing. I have to leave it there. But it's a very interesting time let we're me living say one through more, right let now. Let me say one more thing real quick. Shout out to West Virginia. We have two Democrats in West Virginia, Aaron Scheinberg and Richard Ojeda. <laughs> who are going to bring the state back to Democrats on this uh, issue. I, I, hey, I, I don't Thank know. You. Maybe there's a chance for a Thank few Republicans to, to follow in <laughs> right. uh, Donald Trump's <laughs> Thank steps you, Trish. Anyway, good to see you, Stuart. Great good to, to see, see all you. of you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have conversation.